In this video, we will make a checkbox desktop application in Python using Qt Designer. You can download and develop the source codes of the project in this video from the Turtle Code GitHub account. Before starting the project, you can support us by following the Turtle Code YouTube channel and other social media accounts. So let's start. Create a project in Qt Designer, which is used to design desktop application. Add three checkboxes from the Object tab and align them vertically. You can adjust the properties of the checkboxes that we have aligned vertically from the red table on the side. We will use these tables. As you can see, when we enlarge our three vertically lined checkboxes, they all grow proportionally. In the yellow tab on the side, there are features where we can adjust the physical properties of our desktop application. We will use these features in this project and future projects. We created three checkboxes. Now let's change the names of these checkboxes according to our project. You can see the design part of your desktop application by pressing Ctrl and our keys on your keyboard. As you can see, the design part of your desktop application has been created. Let's close the design and transfer the button that we will use in our project from the Object tab to the Design section. Set the size of the button. Rename the button. We need to set an ID to access every object we create. Let's create separate IDs to reach the checkboxes while writing code. Set an ID to reach the button we created while writing the code. Press Ctrl and our keys simultaneously from the keyboard and see the design of your desktop application. Along with the checkboxes, the button has been added to our desktop design. Let's close the design and save our Qt Designer project to the file where we will write code in Python. The point you should pay attention to here is that the code file and the Qt Designer file should be in the same place. As you can see, the checkbox file we saved has been added to our project file. In the Python project, go to the terminal. Here we will convert the Qt Designer file we saved into a Python file. Then we will transfer the Python file we created to our main project Python file. With this code, we can convert our Qt Designer file to a Python file. Press the Enter key on the keyboard. As you can see our Python file has been created. In the previous lessons, we had coded the objects we used in our desktop application in the Python file ourselves. But in this lesson, we will convert the file we designed in Qt Designer to a Python file and use it. In this way, we can create our desktop applications in a much shorter time. In this Python file, there are the codes of the design we designed in Qt Designer. As you can see, all the objects we created, their names and ID information are included in this Python file. Let's start coding the project. Create an empty Python file. We need the necessary arguments for the desktop application we are going to create to run and close properly. For this, transfer the sys module to our project file. We use a file extension called Qt Widgets when creating a desktop application. With this extension, we can adjust many features of our desktop application. Transfer this extension to use in our project. We transferred a UI file to our Python project file using Qt Designer. Then we converted that file to Python file. In Python, we can use all its features by transferring the Qt Designer Python code file to our main code file. For this, transfer the Python Qt Designer file to your main code file. Notice that the main window class is a class that contains all the features of design. Create a class in your main Python file. We will code our desktop application project in this class. While creating the class, we sent objects such as Qt widget and QMain window into the class. We will often use the properties of these two objects in the coding process. Create a main function inside the class. Create a super function using the name of the class we created. 
Thanks to this function, we will provide the connection of all functions in the class with the self command. Sync UI main window class to self parameter in Qt designer file. As I said before, we transferred the UI main window class from the checkbox Python file to our desktop application. Synchronize the self command to use it simultaneously on all functions inside the class. Create a function to create desktop application outside of the class. For the program to run properly, send the required arguments from the sys module using the Qt widget and application files. Create a desktop application from the class we created. Show the desktop app you created on the screen. Send the required argument from the sys module to close the application when the close button is clicked in the desktop application. Call the function we created and run the Python file. As you can see, we managed to run the desktop application we designed in Qt Designer. Now we will assign tasks to checkboxes and buttons. While designing the project in Qt Designer, we created a cinema checkbox. We set the ID of the checkbox as cinema. We will check the status of the checkbox using this ID. For this, we will create a function called show underscore state shortly. We use the state changed and connect methods while querying the state. Now create a function to check the status of the checkbox. Send the value parameter to the function to check the status of the checkboxes. Print the checkbox status to the console. Run the project and check. When I click on the cinema checkbox, the console displays two numbers indicating that the checkbox was clicked. When I click on the checkbox one more time, the number zero, which indicates the status of the checkbox, appears on the console. When I click on other checkboxes, we don't see a status change because we haven't assigned a task yet. We can use the isChecked method to check the status of the cinema checkbox in bool data type. Run the project and test it. As you can see, we can check the status of the checkbox in bool data type like this. We can check the status of checkbox with text. Run the project and test it. As you can see, we can see the name of the checkbox whose mode has changed. We can check the IDs of the reading and running checkboxes from the Python file or the Qt Designer design file. Now let's do the same for the reading and running checkboxes. Let's check the status of the checkboxes using the reading and running IDs. These encodings in the function are very illogical. Because we can use a sender parameter that specifies which checkbox was clicked. Thanks to the sender parameter, we get rid of a lot of code. Let's print the variable of the sender parameter to the console. Run the project and test it. When we change the status of the checkboxes, we can see the addresses of the checkboxes on the console. We can use the text command to see the texts instead of the addresses of the checkboxes. Run the project and test it. As you can see, this is how we can see the texts of the checkboxes instead of their addresses. Here, the texts of the checkboxes are printed on the console for each state change. Instead, using the isChecked command, we can only see the texts in the console when the checkboxes are clicked. Create a simple if query for this. Run the project and test it. When we click on the checkboxes, we can see their texts on the console. However, when we change the status of the checkboxes again, we do not see the checkbox texts again. This makes more sense. Now go to the design part of Qt Designer and add a group box. Transfer checkboxes into group box. Create a label to see the text of the checkboxes in the desktop app instead of on the console. Set an ID to access the label we created with the code. Specify an ID to assign a task to the created button. Set an ID that indicates the group box is a hobby group. As you can see, we did not change the IDs of the checkboxes. Save the project. 
Since we made changes in the Qt designer in the Python project, we need to change the Python file again. Go to the terminal in your project and redo the action we did before. When you make a design change, you have to do this in the Python file. This way we can transfer new changes. We will assign a task to the button with the clicked connect method using the ID of the button we created. We need a function to assign a task to the button. Create this function. Notice that the function name is synchronized with the clicked connect method. Instead of seeing the names of the checkboxes in the console, we want to see them in the label in our desktop application. Create an empty string variable for this. We will scan using the group ID we created. We can access the checkboxes in the group with the find children command. Create a for loop where we scan the checkboxes. We will only use click checkboxes. Create another if query for that. Add the text of the clicked checkbox to the result text. Use the backslash n command to make it appear one after the other. Set its text using the ID of the tag we created. Run the project and check. Clicked checkboxes appear on the console. When we click the button, the clicked checkboxes appeared on the label on the desktop. Now let's go to Qt Designer and add job group. We can use the copy paste method. We need to edit the IDs of the job objects. Edit the ID of the group box. Edit the text of the checkboxes. Edit the IDs of the checkboxes. Specify ID to get to the label we use to show the texts of the selected checkboxes. Set an ID to the button to show job checkboxes on the screen and console. Save the new design in the Python project file. In Python project, go to terminal section to convert new Qt designer file to Python project file. Convert the Qt designer to Python as we did before. As we did before, we will assign a task using the ID of the button we just created. For this we will use the clicked connect method and create a function. Create a function in sync with the function name we use with the clicked connect method of the newly created button. We will do the same operations as we did in the hobby function. Create an empty string to print the names of the checkboxes selected in the label. Using the ID of the group box, scan the checkbox with the find children method. We can use the QD widget and Q checkbox methods for this. Let's start a scan with the for loop. Create an if query as we want to see the click checkboxes in the label on the desktop. Add the text of the clicked checkbox to the empty string. Encode the backslash n code so that it appears one after the other. Access the tag using the tag's ID and set its text. Run the project and test it. The texts of the selected checkboxes appear on the console screen. Now let's hit the button and see it in our desktop application. The same operations do not happen in the job group. But when we press the button, it appears in our desktop application. Now let's show the clicked checkboxes of the job group in the console. For this, we will use the IDs of the checkboxes to show their status in the console with the state changed method. We will show status in the console with the state changed method. Let's do the same for other checkboxes. Run the project and test it. As you can see, when we click on the checkboxes in both groups, it appears on the console and in our desktop application where we click on the buttons. In this lesson, we made an example of checkboxes that are frequently used while developing desktop applications. Don't forget to enhance this example and sync it with your apps. If you have any questions let me know in the comments. You can also support us by subscribing to the Turtle Code YouTube channel and other social media accounts.